and the building blocks to understand like how to eat for performance, right? A lot of guys are, I mean, most everyone is looking to add muscle, lose fat, right? We're going to get into a little bit of how to do that and a little bit of the intricacies of what it is we're actually eating and how it plays a role in, uh, in our training. All right. Um, Eric, could you please go to the next slide? All right. Um, so macronutrients, right? Macronutrients are how we break down what it is we're actually eating, right? So everyone's familiar with calories. Calories are a unit of heat that um, basically measures the energy that something has inside of it, right? So we use that to know how much energy there is in a carb, a protein, or a fat, right? As we've listed here, protein, four calories per gram, carb, four calories per gram, and fat, uh, nine calories per gram. Now, and guys, obviously... at the end of the day, calories are, are king. So, you know, don't obsess too much over one or the other, but um, making sure that at the end of the day, you're getting in enough calories. Um, so if you feel like you're prioritizing one over another macronutrient, you know, kind of gets in the way of you getting your calories in, something you should assess. Again, calories are king. So just keep that in mind as we kind of go through all this. Sorry, yeah. Evan. All good. Um, so macronutrient, there's also micronutrients. We're not going to get into that as much today because I find that if you if you have the macros covered, right, like X was just saying, we got to get our big building blocks of our diet in there, right? When that's in place, we can have another conversation about micronutrients, but a conversation about micronutrients without addressing macronutrients, kind of missing the forest for the trees, right? Um, yeah, carbs. I'm just going to read this out. We'll talk a little bit about it. Carbohydrates are our body's primary source of fuel and as such make up the largest share of caloric intake for most people. So that means like, if I have 2,000 calories in a day, which I'm on right now, probably half of that should be carbohydrates, right? Uh, because it's our, our primary fuel source. So within our body, we have a few different systems by which muscles use energy. One of the primary, especially for strength-based movements, involves stores of glycogen within the muscles. Glycogen stores are basically sugars that are readily available for small bursts of energy. When you feel burned out or gassed after practice, it's likely your glycogen stores are depleted, right? Um, this is largely why foods like bananas or sugary drinks like Gatorades or even simple sugars like candies can be seen used during workouts by athletes. They're easily digestible by the body and can help replenish glycogen in the body. This isn't the full picture on carbohydrates, but I really wanted to focus on making this practical for training, right? What is a carb? How does it relate to our training? And what carbohydrates do is they provide us with readily available energy. Now, you can have energy without carbohydrates. Sure. Again, this is just meant to be the most practical guide to it. So when you think of getting energy for practice, it should be about carbohydrates, right? We want the glycogen stores in our muscles to be maximized. That way we can have strong output during our training sessions, right? Uh, please go to the next one. All right, protein. If you guys have ever spoken to us about nutrition, you know protein's the first thing we're talking about, right? Um, it's, it's the one people tend to have trouble getting in. And unfortunately for that reason, it's most important to talk about, I think proteins role in the body is to build up the muscle and other soft tissues. There are the building blocks as such. We need a lot of it when going through a rigorous training regimen. Whenever we train guys, we are breaking down our bodies, right? I'm sure you've all heard the expression, right? You aren't getting stronger in their gym. You're getting stronger in while you're, while you're sleeping. And that is absolutely 100% true. If all you were to do is train, 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 you're obviously breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. You need the building blocks in order to actually have the body adapt to the stimulus we're providing it in the gym. Protein intake is a well-researched topic and the literature shows that around one gram per pound of body weight will optimize your body's ability to recover from training, pack on muscle, and increase strength. So I'm about 160 pounds, right? You could take a guess on what my protein intake is, I shoot for 160. It's good to be on the higher end of that, right? So if I were to go, if I were to have my range be 160 to 180, even better. You're going to need a lot of protein before I start telling you it's too much. So 
Yeah, guys, the, the, the best range is to have at least a gram per pound of body weight as up to as much as 1.5 times a gram per pound of uh, uh, body weight. So, you know, you really are going to have a hard time getting in too much protein. So, um, you know, really keep that in mind when you guys are tracking your protein or at least making, you know, some sort of goal uh, when kind of figuring out your macronutrients. So really just push that upper end as much as you can, because even studies kind of show that you benefit from a little bit more, but again, minimum, at least make sure you're aiming for uh, body weight and grams. Guys, one more thing I would like to say about protein that we did not include in this slide is that if you want, if you're going to think about it as I have my building blocks and I have my energy stores, right? I have my building blocks and protein, I have my energy and carbohydrates. Just understand that the way that a protein molecule is actually structured is that it's a carbohydrate with a little bit at the end, okay? Um, I'm no scientist. I'm not going to dive too deep into how the, the chemistry works here. But the body goes through a process by which if you don't have enough energy, if you don't have enough carbohydrates, you're able to break up the protein molecule, break this little piece off, and you got carbohydrates, right? So that's why we say there's really no upper limit at which it's harmful because any excess protein will just be broken down as carbohydrates. And as we discussed before, Carbohydrates should be a large portion of what you're taking in. Um, let me just make sure I didn't skip anything over here. Oh, yeah, yes. again, guys, because it's going to go through the carbs before it starts to utilize protein as an energy source. So, you know, just because your body can use protein as an energy source doesn't make it optimal. And again, this is really all about optimizing your nutrition. So carbs are important. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I'm going to say about the um, about protein for now, obviously we're going to touch on it again, is that when we're thinking about optimizing the way we eat for training, it's very, very important to take into account the rate of digestion for each of these macronutrients. Okay, There's a reason why you can have a Gatorade during a practice. You can't have a chicken sandwich during practice. right? Obviously, one's a liquid, one's solid, but largely the macronutrient of that uh, make macronutrient makeup of that is a huge factor as well. And that's something we're going to touch on again later in a little more depth. Right, please go to the next one. Actually, you want to take this one? I know you're yes. passionate about the fats. <laughs> um, you know, as, as an athlete myself, you know, fats are something that I definitely take uh, into account, not something I neglect in, uh, in my breakdown of my macros. Um, general breakdown, dietary fats are just our body's building blocks for hormones. When fats are too low, our bodies can't adequately manufacture and uh, the control mechanisms of our bodily functions. So it's pretty much just like your brain can't really communicate with the rest of your body um, if you're not intaking enough dietary fat. Um, something to touch upon in between kind of some of the, the other stuff with fats, um, you know, just because you're intaking more dietary fat does not necessarily mean that fat is immediately going to turn into body fat on your body. Um, that's not really how it works. Your body's going to utilize your dietary fats as, ener as an energy source. So, you know, just because your fats might be high one day or, you know, if you track your calories and you realize, oh my God, I'm, I'm taking in, you know, so-and-so told me to take in this amount of fat. Don't really worry about that too much. Um, it's obviously going to vary on the person, but your body will always utilize those fats as energy um, before it starts to utilize body fat on your body. So two completely separate things, um, you know, something to take into account. Don't stray away from intaking fats into your diet. Definitely something we promote. Um, fats are essential for the absorption of particular fat soluble vitamins, vitamins, which are A, D, E, and K. Um, obviously something we can get into another time as far as like uh, micronutrients and vitamins, minerals. Um, but again, fats are essential for many processes in the body. So don't neglect them. Um, fats usually digest a lot slower. I mean, they always digest a lot slower than carbs and uh, proteins in the diet. So that's why we try to space fats out a little bit more um, from training than we do our carbs and our proteins. Although, you know, it's 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 not something you should completely neglect. Again, if, if, if you're down on your fats for the day, it's always something you can implement pre or post training. Um, just take into account it will slow in, uh, down the digestion of the foods that you're intaking. Um, and that kind of just goes over the last portion of this slide. So these are all kind of things that we want to take into account. Don't stray away from fats, make sure they're included in your diet. 
Um, you can get into some of the health aspects of fats and, and how some are refined, some are not. But again, at the end of the day, fats are not a part of our diet that we should neglect. And we should always make sure they're included um, to some degree in our in our macro breakdown. I just want to add one more thing to the fats conversation, guys. Other than our actual body weight, the next thing we're talking to athletes tends to be my testosterone, my testosterone, my testosterone. How do I get it higher? You know, is it too low? All of these questions. Guys, fats make up our hormones, right? If you are consuming a too low fat diet, right? If you're trying to cut really hard and you have to pick very, very little to eat, do not let that fat drop too low because your body will start to have its hormones be out of whack. You will have low testosterone levels, and that might take a long time for you to get back up, right? We don't want to have to deal with that, especially because you guys are all young, right? It's not a question we want to even have. So if you're ever thinking, all right, how do I boost my test? How do I boost my test? Adequate fat intake, get good sleep, and then you do all your other healthy stuff, like go to the gym, get, you know, all that other stuff, all right? So I just really wanted to drill that in because I feel that in the past, the, the kind of culture and community around what we do has written fats off as like almost an extra, right? That we have our proteins for our building blocks, we have our carbohydrates for energy, and then fats are just kind of everything else. It is, n It could not be further from the case, all right? So I think that's all for fats. And uh, again, we're going to touch again on all the macros later. Um, Coach X, I'll, I'll take this one and I'll ask if you want to add anything mm -hmm. in. Yep. Right. So if there's one thing that I would like to drill into your guys' head, obviously, other than get as much protein as humanly possible, is that the mechanism by which we gain or lose weight is this CICO principle of calories in versus calories out, right? Um, this principle drives all of our weight balance. Gaining, losing, outside of water weight and waste, this will be determined by the number of calories consumed. As previously mentioned, carbs and proteins have four calories per gram, fats have nine. It's important to understand the makeup of these calories does not significantly influence the rate of weight change. Your caloric input versus output is the only thing to worry about here, right? So just a standard kind of recommendation for people is think about it this way, right? Um, a pound of fat in the body can store around 3,500 calories, right? So if we're trying to lose fat, think, okay. Do this little formula in your head. How many calories do I burn in a day? And there are many calculators online. If you guys need, I'll, I'll send you one. I didn't put one on here, but I, I probably should have done that. Uh, and then I'll calculate how many calories you take in, in a day. I think most of us are probably going to be around 2,500 to 3,000. All right, so let's say I'm burning 3,000 calories a day. I want to burn 3,500 calories. I want to lose, lose a pound of fat a week. 500 is probably going to be the baseline, right? So 500, you have your... You have your base metabolism, and then you have the, the number by which you would like to change. Okay, So 500 calorie deficit every day is going to lead to a pound of fat loss a week. 500 calorie surplus is going to gain to, um, is going to amount to be a one pound of, hopefully not fat, hopefully muscle, uh, weight gain per week. All right, guys? So this is actually super easy to figure out. How many calories do I take in? Um, you guys can play this back and I, I think it's really all you need to know, right? So other than this, um, other than the, the calories in calories out, all of that stuff is going to kind of determine what it is that you're actually putting on, right? So if I have, if I have too low, if I have no protein intake, it's going to be very difficult for that pounds of, I put on a week to be muscle. I want you guys to understand calories in is going to be how much weight I'm gaining. Yeah, guys, how this comes down to, to actual body weight. It's, mm -hmm. It doesn't come down to, so how you break that down is going to influence the amount, the amount of tissue or particular tissue you put on your body or take off your body. Yeah, Sorry. all good, all right? So guys, the calories in is going to determine how much weight you gain. From there, protein is going to be the number by which we can determine what percentage of weight we're putting on is actual muscle, right? 
everyone wants to say, oh, I'm going to put on 20 pounds in the next six months. I'm going to come back to wrestling. I'm going to be so jacked, right? Do you want that to be 20 pounds of fat or do you want it to be 20 pounds of muscle? Because it's not just as easy as putting on the weight and it's not just as easy as lifting weights in the gym as well, right? The protein is going to help determine what quality that size is, all right? And I think that we really hammered this one in. So let's go on to the next. Actually, you want to take this one? Yeah, so uh, nutrient timing. Guys, this is just like, you know, how are we going to break down the macronutrients we're taking in throughout the day? Um, obviously, it's important to keep that in mind. Um, if you find yourself in a position where it's just hard for you to eat, you have some wiggle room here. Uh, you know, if someone hasn't eaten all day and they have to eat right before training or they have to, you know, have a meal before training or during training, even it's like, you're not going to stray away from that. We want you to get your calories in at the end, like baseline rule, get your calories in no matter what. Um, but this, if you have the, the, the ability to kind of, um, break up your, your calories a little bit better and track how you're breaking that down throughout the day. Um, this is kind of something you could follow. So, you know, many people advocate for eating every two hours. You could do that. Um, doesn't really make much of a difference. Some eat only once a day. While there are certainly differences, um, what is optimal is mostly determined by what you can do consistently and what complements your schedule best. You know, so again, work with your schedule. If, if, if you can only eat your largest meal of the day before you train, um, obviously we don't recommend that, but you got to do what you got to do to get your calories in. Um, so Again, keep that in mind. Um, as long as you're taking into consideration the rate in which your bodies break down um, and utilize certain macronutrients, then frequency in which you eat is kind of up to you. Again, just complementing your schedule. Um, at the end of the day, just get it in. Um, for example, like 20 grams of carbs um, from fruit might break down in about 20 to 30 minutes, making it uh, an effective pre-training fuel source versus 20 grams of carbs from a sports drink might break down in five to 10. So that might even be a little bit better. It might make it more of a uh, intra training fuel source. Um, you know, it really comes down to just like what sort of carb you're implementing or how fast um, in which that carb processes in the body. Um, so you could think of more simple sugars and things like sports drinks as, Hey, this is something I can utilize fast. I can, I can utilize within a training session versus something maybe like a, um, like a piece of fruit, which is a little bit more fibrous. That might want to be spaced a little bit more pre-training, maybe an hour, maybe 30 minutes before. Um, that's something to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. um, 20 grams of protein may take over an hour to digest. So having protein during your training session probably isn't the best idea, but maybe spacing it to your pre-training meal, good idea. Um, obviously, post-training is also um, a good a good implement of protein in your macronutrient breakdown and how you're going to go about timing that throughout the day. Um yeah, probably something we should avoid having it in immediately pre or intra training. Um, 20 grams of fats play a role similar to protein, but even a little bit slower. Um, being the most dense macronutrient, it takes the longest to digest and is wise to space it as almost as far away from training as you can. Uh, especially if you're, you know, like a wrestler or someone like a field sport athlete where you're running around and moving a lot. Um, something to kind of touch upon just as far as like how things digest and how they can influence your body and how it moves. You know, when we have a lot of like matter in our stomach and we have a lot of food in our stomach, um, that can make it hard to change directions. That can make it hard to move fast. So the rate in which we digest kind of is important if you are, you know, an athlete and you're actually moving. Mm -hmm. Um, so when it comes to performance, not all calories are created equal. So take into account how we are breaking that down if you want to really optimize your training. So again, just kind of touching upon all of that, that's kind of how you could take this. Evan, if you have anything to add. Yeah, guys, I just want to hammer home again that this guide, that this little seminar is meant to give you what is the most practical information for actually improving your nutrition as far as sport and life and whatever goals you have goes, right? So while if you were to probably consult someone who you know works in the field of, of it, like a dietitian or something like that, they're probably going to give you a long-winded answer on why it's super important to spray your protein out evenly throughout the day. And while we don't deny that at all, the priority here is that you're getting it in. So this guide here, 
well help you kind of customize when you should have what according to your schedule. So I actually yeah, we're I, here I to make it this, easy for you guys. I think this guide is really kind of all you need. Um, this little this little thing on the right. So if if this is something you have difficulty with, might be worth a screenshot. Might be worth you know writing it down. Maybe even getting this all tattooed on your arm so you never forget it. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, pre-training guys, pre-training fuel. We all know what a pre-training fuel looks like, right? Um, Gatorade, right? A banana, you know, something like that. We all understand that those are the kinds of things we want to have before training. But why is that? Right. Why is that? Obviously, whenever training, we're losing a lot of fluid, right? We're losing a lot of fluid by sweating, cools down our body. So that kind of goes without saying, you got to drink some water before you train. You got to drink your water during your train always. But the most important time is before because it will actually directly affect your performance, right? Carbohydrates, again, we touched on uh, glycogen stores earlier, but I'll go into it a little bit more here, right? The type of carbohydrate that you're using pre-training is very, very important, right? Um, we're not going to go into this more here, but there's what's called a glycogen index, right? And that basically is a score that rates a carbohydrate as far as how fast it gets into your bloodstream, right? So normally it's probably wise to think of those as being as stable, as slow digesting as possible, right? This might be after. We're talking about pre-training here. We need that sugar. We want it in the bloodstream now. We're going to use it, right? So that's why you see things like um, athletes having candy, stuff like that, because it goes right in you and uh, you have it ready. I don't recommend having something like candy, but something like a fruit, um, a sports drink, those are going to be good sources of this, right? Um, yeah, guys, if you're in the middle of a game or a tournament and you're absolutely desperate for some sort of source of carbs, candy's okay. But again, we if you can find other sources and you can utilize other things, that's probably best. Yeah, I just don't want you guys going, hey, I'm eating candy and you're not doing anything. Hey, you didn't tell me I couldn't, you know, we didn't talk about candy, but I see this guy doing it. I'm going to copy him. This is when candy is appropriate. Free training, if you're dead, if you're going to use that blood sugar up within the next hour, something like that, let's say. All right. So let's get into electrolytes a little bit. And I say a little bit because we are not going to go too crazy with it. There, There's many yeah. different forms of electrolytes and we shouldn't overcomplicate it. Let's just get a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon. Start with That's that. That's what you're going to need. Right. If we have these fluids, how the hell are we going to hold on to them? And that's the role electrolytes play in our training. Right. So I think that um, these three kind of detail what it is you want pre-training and what you don't want pre-training is kind of just about everything else. Right. It's like Coach Xavier was saying before, if you have excess food inside of you, um, you're going to feel a bit bogged down. Obviously, we do not want that. Right. Like imagine you got. Imagine you got some change in your pocket and you're running around, you're hearing that thing jingling, and you're like, this is very, very annoying. It's gonna affect Imagine the way you, got you a run. sandwich in your it's stomach. You don't want the that. way you move. Yes, exactly, exactly. Right. Um, so I'm sure let's you guys avoid can those. relate to that too. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I'll go post training. Um, R fluid. I love R fluid. My favorite kind of fluid. That's my favorite kind of fluid. Um, <laughs> post training fuel. Fluid. So again, water, <laughs> it's always going to be the general general rule that you just want to kind of have water is going to be probably the most important thing when it comes to um pre intra and post training when we have these really grindy sessions and we're really pushing through and you know we know we're losing a lot of water in our training sessions it's good to replace one to 1 1.5 times the amount of water we've lost now obviously it's really hard to measure i'm not going to expect you guys to measure how much sweat you guys are uh losing in a session or even when you have bonus points for it though if you do, that's sick. That's optimizing to its, its max. Like that's, that would be cool. Um, but you don't have to general rule. Just, just make sure you're taking in a lot of water post training, especially if you know, you've lost a lot of water. Um, but if you guys need to get specific, that's kind of where we want to be one to 1 1.5 times the amount of water lost. Um, one full bo bottle of water should be plenty, uh, immediately after training. So you hop off the mat. It's been a tough session. You know, you sweat a lot take off your shirt. You can wring it out. Cool. One bottle of water should be enough to get you guys home um, and get you guys eating and intaking the rest of your fluids for the, uh, for the day carbs. 
same concept, small amount of carbs. This could be a little bit slower digesting. So post-training, if you feel you need some sort of like refined sugar or some, some sort of faster acting carb, the Gatorade or the piece of candy could be useful. Um, but again, don't go too crazy. You could also eat something like a banana or something like a piece of fruit um, or just get your, your post-training meal in um, as long as it's containing some sort of carb source. 20 grams should be plenty. So even if it is a piece of candy, make sure you're not overdoing it um, because a lot of that's just going to be, you know, just just wasted calories. You, you're better off eating something a little bit more micronutrient dense. Um, so if you were to measure it, 20 grams is good. Electrolytes, same concept as before. One teaspoon of salt should be plenty post-training. Um, if you are drinking some sort of electrolyte drink or sports drink, that should contain enough to kind of carry you through your training session. And then if you are planning on eating a post-training meal, I'm sure whatever amount of sodium um, or even, you know, other forms of, uh, you know, just electrolytes um, will be provided for you. But if you think that's something you're missing out on, one teaspoon of salt should be plenty. So you should be good on that. Um, protein, I would say post-training, about 30% of your total protein intake for the day should be consumed after training. So again, not eating too much before, obviously not eating any protein during. Um, and then post-training is where you can intake a lot more of those uh, proteins that you're looking for to take in. Um, and again, if you can... This is something we'll touch upon with like some of the cheat code stuff we're going to talk about. But if you can get some of that in that protein in earlier throughout the day, that's also a good option too. Um, but again, if you're measuring after your training, 30%, about 30% of your total protein intake for the day should be plenty. Um, if you had an intense training session, prioritize the, the, the sources listed above. Um, so making sure that we are taking in fluids, carbs, and electrolytes before we start worrying about protein and fats and all the other stuff that we are taking in throughout the day, just because that's going to just help you feel better. And if you're feeling better, you'll be hungrier. If you're hungry, you're going to perform better. So just, you know, kind of make sure that we go down that checklist if possible. Um, otherwise, um, otherwise now is the time to get in all those macronutrients that we've missed. Uh, maybe while we're training or maybe pre-training, maybe it's early in the morning. Um, again, a lot of those macronutrients could have slowed us down. So now's our time to get all that in. Um, a meal containing some fats along with some of those carbs and extra proteins is always a good choice. Uh, something like a protein smoothie or something like just a meal in general, you know, steak, rice, potatoes, stuff like that. Awesome options. Uh, we'll kind of touch upon some of that later on. But we can move yeah. on to the, the next Guys, one. Guys, just to just to quickly summarize all of that with post training, right? Post training is the time to get in all the other macronutrients that we've discussed. We know are extremely important, but would have slowed us down. All right. So if I had to just give you one line for post training, you get your protein, you get your fats in now because it would have slowed you down while training, right? Um, so I'll I'll take for intra um, intra training fuel. Fluid, the place where you're losing, carb, electrolyte, right? Um, unfortunately, this oh, – actually, I guess fortunately, this doesn't get too much more complicated than the pre-training fuel, right? It's basically more of it, um, except a little less. You should have had most of it pre-training, but, guys, we're not – it's not too hard of a line here with pre-training and intra-training. If, if you don't get to have that Gatorade before you get to the gym, you can have it during – it's not a big deal. Don't sweat it um, because you will be sweating enough. And I don't want you sweating out any extra stressing about the nutrition seminar that we had. Um, so, yeah, guys, try to keep enough fluid to keep up with what you're losing. Have some more carbohydrates. Again, replenish those glycogen stores. Uh, and if you're having a long workout, it's probably pretty wise to do um, maybe another 20 30 grams of carbohydrates right in the middle this would be the perfect time for candy so if you love jolly ranchers you love your sour patch kids right in the middle of a long training session that's exactly when to have it otherwise stay away from it because we're trying to encourage you to eat like adults here all right yeah anything over an hour i would say that kind of justifies the introduction of candy into your training um even if it is something super intense you'll most likely just make up for that later on in the day if it's over an hour, general rule of thumb, I think you can kind of get away with introducing some of those faster acting carbs like candy. Excuse me, I got a question. What's up? 
So uh, my dad was wondering if he can eat the Sour Patch Kids while I'm wrestling. <laughs> um, <laughs> your dad, you know what, man? We won't stop him. We won't yeah. stop him. <laughs> we can't stop him. You yeah. can't have him, but he can. As long as he gives us one. I think that's fair. All right. Um <laughs> actually, you wanna take uh you wanna take this one? Yeah, so this is something um, you know, I think that uh a lot of people kind of neglect. Um okay, awesome. There it is. Intra training, uh nutrition. So I'll kind of just summarize or just kind of go over what is written here just so you guys can kind of get, uh, you know, a little bit more of it. Um, intra training nutrition is probably the most underrated out of the three pre intra post. Um, it's important because it can help fuel certain processes in the body that are being depleted as you fatigue. So, again, if you're training over an hour, if you're running a marathon, let's be honest, you're going to need to eat. During that marathon, you're going to have to replenish some of those uh, processes that are being depleted. So. You know, I could go from one extreme to another. If you're doing a quick 30 minute cardio session on, on the Stairmaster, you'll probably be fine. You could wait till you get home. Um, but if you know you're going to be training over an hour, you're going to be depleting yourself. This is where intra nutrition comes into play. And this is really where, you know, if you are a competitive athlete, you're going to probably be having sessions that are over an hour long. And intra training nutrition is something you should take seriously. So, again, probably the most underrated, in my opinion. Um, something as simple as a sports drink can be more than enough for you. Um, as the carbs and electrolytes in, in, in most of them will replace what you lost, but intra-training nutrition doesn't just come down to what you're taking in during your actual training session, but what you're taking in before as well, since our pre-training nutrition is also going to be kind of what we're breaking down and utilizing while we train. So again, if, if you're someone that you're eating banana as you're pulling up to wrestling class. And, and that's what you look at as your pre-training nutrition. That's your intra training nutrition. You know, whether you, you know, think about it that way or not, that fiber in there, those things are going to kind of process it themselves a little bit slower than if you were eating a piece of candy. But even if in that case, you know, five to 10 minutes, by the time you're done warming up, that's what you're utilizing in the, uh, in the middle of your session. So again, we take this into account when looking how far away from our training sessions, we're spacing our pre-training nutrition. Um, this being said, um, we should be giving equal parts attention to what we are consuming pre, intra, and post-training. Your athletic performance will be positively will be positively influenced by consistently repeating good nutritional habits over time. So, don't look at this as like, "Hey, I trained today. I'm gonna take all this 100% seriously," or "Hey, like I have a big training session today. This is gonna be spot on." Look at this like, hey, if I train five times a week, I'm doing this every day. I'm doing this every day I'm training. I'm doing this five to seven days a week. It's an accumulation process. Um, but Evan, if you have anything to add, please, um, you know, feel free. No, I think that really nails it on the head here. Um, like the back of my shirt says, I'm not going to turn around. It says consistency over everything. Right, Eric? Um we aren't going to be able to reap the benefits of any of what we do if we're not doing it more than once, right? It doesn't matter if you have one good day of nutrition. Got to have a good day two, a good day three. Over time, that turns into a good week, a good month, a good year, right? Um, consistency really is king with this stuff. And you're going to need to be really consistent with the nutrition plan to even understand if it's working for you, right? These are all suggestions. Um, you really have to actually do it and go through it to find out if it works for you, right? So um, especially with something like the calorie intake we were discussing earlier, all these calculators are good uh, for what your actual calorie intake is. But at the end of the day, they're suggestions. There's stuff that they don't account for. So you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error. But you're only going to know what works and what doesn't by actually being consistent. All right. Um, so I think that we are about time for our Last slide. It's been a fun ride with you all. I hope you are all enjoying this. We'll split this one up, Evan. Um, yeah. Do you want to go? I'll do the first part just because this is something I was talking to uh, with some of the athletes. Yeah, in, this is uh, your – this is the Xavier Barrio smoothie recipe. So, real quick, I, uh, I am vegan. I don't eat this right now myself because I am very responsible and I make sure I take in my protein through other sources. But I know you guys, and I was there in high school and wrestling. I know what it's like to not eat and not want to eat and feel like food is an enemy. It's not. So this 
protein cheat code is something that I used in high school in order to get my protein in and to make sure that I actually was, you know, maintaining, retaining, and even gaining muscle um, in, in season, off season, just, you know, generally it helped kill a lot of my protein intake for the day. So I wanted to share this with you guys. Um, obviously this can be kind of changed up depending on what you like to have in your smoothies and what you want to add. Um, but if you do have a hard time getting in your protein for the day, something as simple as a smoothie can be a game changer. Um, ingredients are key when it comes to breaking down what you're looking for from your smoothie. This is just a really simple, super simple recipe. You guys could, you know, not spend much money in a week and get this in every single day and get about half of your protein in for the day. Um, 12 ounces of egg whites, pasteurized. You can drink that raw. You're fine. You won't get sick. Make sure that the carton kind. Um, that right there is 37 grams of protein, five ounces of yogurt. That's 18 grams of protein. Now, again, depending on the brand, that's going to influence the amount of protein we're getting in um, from those five ounces. But the Fage is usually the cheapest. Go with the Fage. It's highest in protein. If it's a protein yogurt, awesome. Do that too. That generally has about 18 grams of protein per five ounces. Sweet. One scoop of protein supplement. So if you have protein powder, I know everyone has protein powder at home. That's definitely something that almost everyone has. If not, you can get dirt cheap, order off Amazon, go up to a CVS, something simple. One serving of that, 20 grams of protein. Throw all that together, that's 75 grams of protein in one serving. Carbs are almost non-existent. Uh, fat is there, but again, almost non-existent. So you're just killing off 100% or 50%, I should say, about of that daily intake of protein. Now throw a banana in there, throw in some strawberries, throw in some olive oil, throw in some avocado, throw in things like that. Now you're just kind of checking off everything on your list. Um, and it makes it super simple, super easy. Um, if you need, you could also do this in the morning too, to kind of get a head start in your day. But if you're someone that lacks throughout the day because of training school, yada, 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 you can just throw this in right at the end of the day and that will kind of help you out and give you a jump start or kind of fill the gaps for what you've been missing throughout your uh, your day. Now it's kind of that. Thanks, Coach. Um, so, yeah, protein is obviously probably going to be the most difficult to get in, right? So uh, these suggestions are great, right? Back when I was, you know, in the same – I'm. Similar to Coach X, I am also vegan. I also wrestled in high school. And for me, getting in that protein, getting in new, good nutrition is like, oh, my God, why can't I just train? Why do I have to worry about this? Well, with some, with some planning, it's not actually that hard. And I hope that these cheat codes can help you out, right? Um, five ounces of yogurt for me, I was doing up to a whole carton a day, right? You get a big carton of Greek yogurt. That's all your protein in right there. So you don't got to overcomplicate it. Find something that's got a lot of protein. Eat a lot of it. There you go. Simple as that. Um, right. So for the other sources, right, let's um, let's list a couple of things. Right. So if we're looking for a good intra uh, pre slash intra workout. I mean, it's the easiest one. They sell Gatorades. They sell body armors. Right. But if you're looking for something other than that. Bananas. Bananas are perfect. Right. Bananas are perfect. They got high electrolyte content. They taste great. They got, you know. They got a good amount of carbohydrates in them, and you don't even need to put them in a bag or anything. They come with a bag. How crazy is that? Um, for fat intake, I like to think of something like an avocado, right? That's going to be our healthier, more responsible option. But you're not always going to be able to do that. So if you got to take a spoonful of peanut butter, go for it. We're go trying to be it, practical guys. here, guys. I want you guys getting jacked and us hammering in minutia after hour after hour of hour, right? We could go all day with this. Obviously, nutrition is a very complex topic. Let's find something that works. Keep doing it. Be consistent. Make adjustments, right? So if you got to start off with the peanut butter, go for it. There's no Your shame. Your body's not going to notice the difference. It like, will again, not. It's not. It's not. Again, over time, choose the avocado. If it's one, two days, choose the peanut butter. Just get it in. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Right. Um, so... One more thing I'd like to say, guys, is if we're if calories just overall is the is the issue. I know with with wrestlers, right, guys, it's so going to school, going to practice, going to lift. There's not that much time to eat, and if, especially if we're trying to be responsible about nutrient timing, like we discussed, it's hard to get the it's hard to get all those calories in. But something like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know, if you put on 
the the you know put like two to four tablespoons of peanut butter on you put a bunch of jelly on there maybe even add a little chocolate chip you get a little crazy with it that's up to that's almost a thousand calories right there and if you just do that once a day it's not really gonna feel that different but a thousand calorie difference when we're talking about only burning a thousand in a day that is obviously that's huge that's 33 percent. that's a 33 percent increase if you if you just look at it that way um Coach Xavier, you got anything else to add for this one? Goodbye, Coach Xavier. Coach Eric, what do you think? I think you guys hammered all of it. I love it. Yeah. Um, I feel I feel like this was this was again, this was meant to be the most practical guide I could possibly give you, right? Like if I had, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to have you guys listen to me, which I do. That is exactly what's going on here. These are the things I want you to remember, right? Um, so um, if you guys have any questions, I would love to hear them. I would love to answer them. Yeah, any questions, guys, we'll we'll take whatever you guys got in the meantime just to kind of – for anyone, for anyone listening, because um, this is going to be recorded, for anyone listening after, please reach out to us. I would love to talk about this stuff. Um, so do not hesitate to to send me a DM, a phone call, whatever. Hit me up. All right. Does anybody have any questions that's actually in here right now? Okay. All right. I guess that means that we just covered everything. All right. Yeah, guys. If yeah. if if you're if you're listening and it's something that you guys want to you know take us up on feel free to reach out to us about any more of like some of the intricacies that kind of go behind some of this. We can go into some further details on like, you know, supplements that might come into play pre intra and post training. Uh, we can kind of break some of that down as well. If you yeah, guys we'll probably like do it. another one of these. Yeah. yeah Cover, we, go in a little more in depth. For sure. For sure. So if this is something you guys like, let us know if this is something um, that you want to see more of, or if it's even something in particular, like you want us to break down a particular aspect of what we discussed today, uh, we could do that as well and kind of just repeat what we did, just a little bit more expanded. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's all, guys. Um, if any of the other coaches have anything to add, please do. But if not, thank you guys for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, it would have been very sad and I would have started crying hysterically, possibly throwing up if nobody got on here. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, with that being said, you know, think about it. 